Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. And I just want to say to the viewers out there that this is the first show uh, that we are taping inside the studio itself, as uh, you may not know or know. Uh, we have been uh, 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 shut down since uh, March of 2020, and we just reopened. So we're back here in the studio live. And I'd like to introduce my guest, Debbie Roy. Debbie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And Debbie is the executive director of the Beverly Housing Authority, and uh, which um, I'm sure she's very busy these days, and we'll talk about that. So, uh, uh, Debbie, for our audience, tell us a little bit about your, your background. Sure. I know you've been with the Housing Authority for a long time. Mm -hmm. Kind of get, get us sure, up to the present sure. day. Um, I started at the Housing Authority back in 2002. Um, I came in as the, Depu as the Director of Finance. I was the Director of Finance, managing all things um, financial budgets and so forth uh, for 19 years. Uh, three years ago, I became the deputy director, and a couple months ago, I became the executive director. And my background prior to that, I worked for an accounting firm that specialized in um, housing authority finance. So oh. my background is primarily accounting and finance. Um, so it just uh, worked out very well for so me. So you had the, the perfect background mm -hmm. for, for this kind of yeah, position. Sure. Yeah, And I know that um, uh, these days with uh, the with properties being so expensive and, and rental property being almost, uh, you know, non-existent, hard right. to get, uh, your job just is. So tell us for our audience, sure. you know, what, what is a, a housing authority? What, what is your mission? What, what do you do? What do we do? Um, well, we are essentially a political body um, considered a local government agency under state law and we provide housing to low-income individuals um, primarily uh, seniors uh, families uh, we do have some housing for special needs uh, individuals and then we have um, units that we own as well as vouchers that folks can live in private in private properties owned by landlords. Right, um, and we'll talk about that yeah, sure. in, in, so, in a second. So we, um, we are in charge of managing all the properties that we have. Um, there's 240 housing authorities throughout Massachusetts that have, oh. um, that are, you know, have property like us, and um, we, um, we are responsible for the properties within the town that we run, so, mm -hmm. so all of the properties in Beverly that we manage. Um, we're in charge of the, you know, as a director, I'm in charge of the personnel, the properties, um, I, you know, the board sets the policies, which is my responsibility to implement and make sure that we're following, you know, state and federal rules and regulations as they relate to housing. Right, right. Now, you, you have, um, you administer housing that's federal under, under uh, that's administered by the uh, Department of Housing, uh, uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development, mm -hmm. and I, I want to make sure I get it right here. And and there's state, the State Department of Housing and Community Development. Correct. So you have two uh, two sort of administrations that that you administer the housing or, or manage Correct. the we housing. Correct. We for. have two oversight agencies that are very similar and very different at the same time. Um, both both underneath both of those um, agencies, we have. Um, public housing, which are buildings that we own, and we also have uh, vouchers that, um, as I mentioned, people can take the voucher and go live, not in our properties, but in private, um, private Pri family private, homes, private, private property. Yeah, private property. Um, now tell us how many, how many, I know you have a d different number, how many HUD uh, uh, units do you have and how many of Sure, the we have 168 federal public housing units and 420 federal housing vouchers, which is commonly known as the Section 8 program. Mm -hmm. um, and those are located, um, there's, we have four sites, I believe, in Beverly for the public housing under the HUD. Under, under HUD. HUD, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, if, I, if my math is correct, that means that you own, to, uh, own and maintain 646 properties. In federal and state. Federal and mm -hmm. state Correct. Uh, together. Now you say you own them. Correct. So how do you acquire title? How do you acquire ownership? Um, of years ago, um, back in the 40s after the war, the state um, decided that they needed to build some housing for our veterans coming home for the veterans and their families. And um, that's when housing authorities were kind of created. And the, they awarded cities um, that had locations land that they could build on 
um, money. They essentially, DHCD bought these properties and HUD provided, bought the properties as well, and then we became owners of the properties and we were required to maintain and manage them. Okay, so so they so are deeded, so the city owns them, right? No, you're no, city, no, no, the city, we're not actually related to the city at all. We have no association with the city other than working with them, of course. Oh, so but you're not a city department. We are not. We are essentially a state department. Oh, okay. So we are um, under state law. We're, we're kind of governed by Chapter 121B. So we're we're essentially a state. We're they we're really not a state agency. We're a quasi state agency, I guess they yeah. refer to us. Yeah, we're a little bit of a different animal. Interesting. Um, now, uh, so for our viewers, mm -hmm. there there are two types of ways people uh, can or places they can live in the circumstances. One is they they'll live in your owned properties, Correct. whether it's under HUD or or the or the other uh, <laughs> DHCD <laughs> DHCD mm -hmm. um, and. There's under Section Eight. They can live in in private residences that are that are owned by by private individuals. So tell us what Section Eight is. What does that mean? Tell so, our viewers what that so means. So Section Eight is a program administered by HUD that allows an applicant or um, a, a tenant, a resident, to when they when they're awarded their voucher, they can take their voucher um, and live in. Um, like Beverly Commons, for example, yeah. or, um, you know... Well, a, private housing, in other words, housing. No, nothing and owned by you. Nothing owned by us. Right. No, no, no. Right. They, they, so it's a ba they, basically the, 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 the voucher subsidizes their rent, so they can go into a correct. landlord and say correct. that rent is X and my voucher... Now, right. can, can a landlord refuse a Section 8, or no. what's the law regarding um, I'm not 100% familiar... Um, but I don't believe they can. Um, you know, HUD would be more familiar with that. And my yeah. And is there also a, a state uh, version of Section Eight? There is. It's called the MRVP program, the Massachusetts Rental Voucher Program. Okay. And again, as I mentioned, it's similar but a little bit different. The rules are a little bit different. On the voucher program, a tenant is required to pay thirty percent of their income, and on the MRVP program, it's forty percent of your income. So there's lots of different. Um, you know, people need to be aware when they apply what the end result will be for their rent, because mm -hmm. that ten percent could be make a difference for somebody. Now, in in these in these six hundred and forty six units, mm -hmm. what are they they studios, one bedroom, two bedroom, all of the above? Um, we have in our six hundred in the public housing units that we own, primarily the senior housing is one bedroom. We do have a couple of two bedrooms, um, not too many, I don't believe. Um, but our family units are primarily two and three bedrooms. We don't have anything larger than a three bedroom. Okay. Now, now there are. You say there are twelve sites, right? Mm -hmm. Twelve yes. separate sites, and and they would be uh, these sites would be either either HUD or or the state. Correct. Uh, uh, okay. So we're going to take a look at some of these sites. Maybe okay. you can tell us a little bit sure. about them because they range from big high rise buildings right. to little little right. uh, one story. Right. So let's look at uh, image sure. one, Zach, in the control room. If you could show that uh, for us. Okay. So tell us what, what are we looking at here? So Debbie? this is Bresnahan Court. It's part of our Story Ave um, story. Uh, Bresnahan um, development. This is family housing, and um, I'm not 100% sure if these are two or three bedrooms, but it could be a combination of both. But this is probably a four unit, I think if I'm looking at it right, that's probably a four unit um, building. So four families are housed there. Okay, and uh, Zach, uh, image two, please. This is our Cedar Street development. This is a, a senior development. These are one bedroom units, um, and they're all uh, one level, single level, so it's, it's good for folks that um, have mobility issues. Um, and, and when they apply, they can make those designations on their application if they have um, limitations. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is Cedar Street. Okay, and uh, number three, Matt, uh, Zach, please. This is uh, the McLean Building on Federal Street. This is 57 units of senior housing. Um, it has an elevator, two elevators actually. Um, so seniors that um, have mobility issues can obviously live in on the higher floors with the elevator, assistance of the elevator. Uh, but those are all one-bedroom units. Right. And then the next one, please, Zach. And that, that's the big one. That's and the this biggest is our seat. Garden City Towers. The previous um, images that we looked at were all state housing. Okay. Um, this is our federal public housing. Right. This is Garden City Towers. There's 100 like units. 100 units there, right. Um, yep, with two elevators, and it's all senior housing. This is, oh, this is all, I was going to ask senior. you, now, do you have mixed senior and... and uh, we do. Um, the state law requires that, I believe it's 12%. We have to have 12% of our um, units occupied by... 
um, young disabled. So, um, so, so there's folks that, in some cases, um, there's folks that are not seniors living in, in some of our properties. Okay. And now, now tell us about uh, the, how, how do people apply, um, how, if, if I'm disabled or senior or uh, I'm, I'm of a low income and kind of mm -hmm. give us, get, run sure. us through that. Okay. Um, we are, there's links on our website to all of the applications and each of the programs have different applications. So, um, Unfortunately, it's the unfortunate part if you're interested. You, you, you're able to apply for them all, but unfortunately it's a, it's a separate application that you would need to fill out. Um, the state provides, it's, a, it's a, um, a program that the state puts out. It's called CHAMP Common Housing Application. Mm, I knew I wouldn't get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's called CHAMP. Um, it's under the DHCD website. And you can go on to that and it will, it will ask you set up an account a username and a password, and you would fill out everything that it asks for, name, address, um, it asks for income, and then it also asks if you're, um, if you, you know, if you have limitations that you want us to consider, if, if stairs are difficult for you, right. um, if, if you're a family, you would list all of your family members, so we would know what size okay. bedroom size you would need, okay. um, and you would check all those things off, and through the CHAMP application, you're able to, um, the nice part about that application is although you have to do a different application for each type of program within CHAMP, you can check off all the different cities. So if you were from Beverly, you may want to check off Beverly, Peabody, Denver, mm -hmm, Salem. Mm -hmm, okay. um, but there are priorities and preferences that would you would probably rise to the list to the top of the list sooner in the town that you currently lived in. A lot of the t cities and towns have local preferences. Yeah, um, yeah. And then as for the other applications, there's also a link to the Section 8 program, um, but th and that's a centralized waiting list. So you go on a list um, that, even though you're on the Beverly website applying for it, you're going onto a, a, a Massachusetts centralized waiting list. So any housing authority that is it's pulling oh. people, your, your chances of getting pulled um, by anybody, and you can live anywhere in the state, okay. um, is better. Right. And then there's applications for the federal public housing. Um, I believe that's a paper form that you need to fill out. The other two are computerized. Yeah. So, but all the links are on our website. Yeah. Now, why would someone uh, choose to do, do Section 8 as opposed to, uh, is there, because their, their income levels are, are higher? No, and, no. Um, it's, I believe it's, for the most part, they're all 80% of the area median, um, and, and most folks are even lower than that. Okay. Um, so is, it would be an availability thing if all of the... Well, I, I think... Um, some folks would prefer to live, um, you know, they may want to stay where they currently are if they have a home, if they're, if they're oh, already living right, somewhere, okay, it may so allow them to stay where they are if they and have. And your properties might not be convenient for correct, them. Correct, correct. Yeah. Or they may want to stay in a specific school area for their yeah, children. I um, can see that, seniors yeah. may want to stay closer to family members. Um, there's different reasons people m may take uh, different applications. Yeah. Now, you were talking about. Um, people with disabilities. Is all your housing ADA compliant or just certain? Certain, certain units are. Certain, certain units Not are. all units are ADA compliant. So if you were in a wheelchair or a walker and you needed a handicap unit, you would you would check that off. And we do have units. The list is longer, unfortunately, for those units because yeah. we do have fewer of them. Now, are you obligated to have a certain percentage of the units that are? I don't uh, believe so. No. Okay. But of course the, the construction costs and all of that, right, you know, right. to make ramps and all the other. Right. Other we do, th if, if a person, um, you know, moves into housing as a young senior, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if someone moves into housing as a young senior and ages in place, um, you know, they are able to apply for reasonable accommodations if they need, um, um, railings in their railings. bathrooms, um, yeah. handles in their yeah. bathrooms or, you know, a handle on a step just to help so them get into the unit. So you can put that in ex post facto, right? right. And they right. can on, on, right. on your nickel. Correct. Yeah. Correct. In some cases, if it's a, if it's a big uh, or an expensive um, modification, we may not be able to do it depending on our budget limitations, but we do make every effort to try and assist all of our, all of our residents. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, I probably, <laughs> it, 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 needless to ask, I'm, I'm sure that the waiting lists are, are long uh, these days, <laughs> given what's happened in, especially here in the Northeast with the, 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 the rental market, the housing right, market. Right. Uh, give us an idea. I mean, if I filled out one of these applications, how long would I potentially um, have to wait? If a person applied as a standard application, meaning they had no priorities or preferences, um, 
a standard application is probably five or more years. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a very long list. There's thousands upon thousands of people on um, the Section 8 waiting list and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people uh, on the... Um, on the at the public housing list. Yeah. So. Now, what typically would would a person uh, um, live uh, start living in public housing and then and stay there for a long time, or is there like a like a curve that says most people stay two to three years and then maybe they're maybe they're, they they have to have public housing because maybe they're jobless now, but then they find jobs. Right. Or, or how? Um, we, you know, we do have folks that are successful and and. Um, graduate, I guess you would say, and, and move on to um, private housing. But I would say for the most part, um, the folks that we have tend to stay with us. But primarily our folks are seniors, so they, they move in and, and stay with us. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I'm, I'm curious, um, uh, you know, Andrew DeFranza's organization, Harbor mm -hmm. Lake Community Partners mm -hmm. and, and Mickey Northcutt over at North Shore Community Development Coalition, w what sort of relationship or if any do you have with them? Do you interact with them at all? We interact, but we don't have any business dealings uh, necessarily, we, we lean on each other on occasion when we have issues. Um, during COVID, we, we were working with um, Andrew um, to try and get a vaccine, a vaccine clinic going. So it was very helpful to have him and his staff assist us um, with what they went through in order to get their vaccine clinic. Mm -hmm. So they were, um, you know, vital in helping us with that. But we don't really have any day-to-day um, -day business currently yeah. with them. Yeah. Not to say that we wouldn't, but we currently do not. Yeah. Now, now, how how big an organization? How many employees do, does the, the housing yep, authority we have? We have 24, 25, including myself. We have a staff of um, not eight eight maintenance people, nine eight or nine maintenance people, and uh, the rest are all office administrative staff. Mm -hmm. Now, do you? Uh, I mean, eight maintenance people for that many units. Mm -hmm. I mean, do they do they do all of the maintenance, or do you farm out like no, to third we, party? Like, we, if you need to put a new roof on, they might not be. Right. You know, no, we, we contract out. For the most part, our maintenance staff, um, they do the work orders, the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, broken screen, broken door, uh, leaky faucet. Um, but if it's something bigger, like you, like you mentioned, a roof or paving, um, landscaping, um, cleaning, we currently have those all contracted out. Yeah. Now, what about, uh, what about like insurance policies for your building? Mm -hmm. do, do you get like a break on insurance from, comp from insurance no, companies? Not, because of, no, not, no. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, well, let's go. Let's fight for it. <laughs> I know. I know. No, um, I, you know, we do have, there's a couple of agencies that created insurance um, specifically for housing authorities, um, but I don't think their their rates any better than any private organization we get. Yeah. So and, and so, what what is the average age of, of your, your buildings? Gee, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, is there, are there some really old ones? Are they pretty much? Yeah, we we just lost a senior um, at one of our developments, and she, I believe she was 103 or 104. Oh. I'm not sure. Oh, but, I, uh, I, oh, okay. I, I maybe I didn't say my question. I thought, how how old are your are your buildings? How old? Oh, the old? buildings. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Um, the buildings are probably um, the majority of our buildings were built in the. I, you know, the old, the, the, the family housing was built probably in the 40s. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, after the war, they did a lot of late 40s, early 50s. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the Upton School um, was a school for a long time, so I'm not even sure when that was originally built. Yeah. But we, we took it over, I believe, in the 80s. Okay. Um, I think some of our newer family housing was built in the 70s. Okay. Um, but there hasn't been state development in a very, very long time. Yeah. So I would say, I would say um, probably 70s or or 80s would have been the more yeah. recent. Properties. Now, I know you're, uh, uh, I read an article in the Salem News that you're doing a lot of uh, capital project mm -hmm. upgrades. Yeah. And I think we have a few pictures there. Uh, let's look again at, at number four, I think, uh, Zach, which was the Garden City Tower. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now tell us what, what, what are you sure. doing there? That's uh, the big senior housing, right, with 100 units? Correct. So in this building, we have a um, elevator uh, modernization job that um, is currently with the engineers right now. So the work hasn't actually started. Um, where there's two elevators in this building that we've had numerous, numerous expensive problems with. So we decided that we needed to um, address it in a bigger fashion. So we um, we have these elevators are going to be um, essentially rebuilt, and we're going to take one down at a time, so that the seniors right, won't so. have any worry about right. accessing the elevator. Other than the frustration of the limitation to the one versus the two, um, but it's going to be a completely new cab. 
um, that the tenants will see. It'll be a completely new cab, and then um, you know, of course, all the the machine room and um, uh, generator and so forth will be all replaced. Right. Stuff that the kind of okay. behind the scenes. But all that's right. a one million dollar job. Okay, and um, let's look at this, if I could that the sure. CPA also um, gave us some money towards the elevator community. Job. The uh, um, Preservation Act. C Community Preservation yeah. Act. Oh, yeah, so. right, okay. And let's look at, uh, at number five, I believe, Zach. Uh, is there... Uh, um, this is Hilltop. Um, I don't believe we have anything on. at Hilltop. Okay. Uh, the next image, uh, Zach, please. This is um, Kel uh, Kelleher, Kelleher Road. Kelleher, okay, yep. yeah. We don't have anything going on at Kelleher right now. But those are attractive units, aren't they? Nice setting. Yeah, that's senior housing, senior state housing. Okay. And the next image, uh, Zach? This is Bald Street. We have a very big uh, modernization going on here. We have a $2 million. Uh, there's 25 units here, uh, 25 senior senior uh, units at this at development. Um, we're, we have a $2 million mod job that we're doing. We are essentially relocating tenants. We're going to do it in blocks of either four or six at a time. So the unit will be completely vacant. They're going to completely gut the unit and um, basically rebuild it from the walls out. So it'll be, a, you know, new plumbing, uh, you know, new fixtures, new countertops, new flooring. So they'll be, um, they'll be nice. We had, we've done, the roofs are new and the paving is new. But now we're going to do the inside, so that'll be a big job. That'll be starting um, probably in the fall. Yeah. Now I'm not sure. Uh, is, that, is there another image or, or not? Or we is that? Oh, the, okay. This is I think this is Roger Conant. Yeah, um, Roger Conant. We Con are doing the roofs. This is actually across the street from here. Um, the the roofs are going to be done at this site, um, and the um, the police um, satellite office that they have at right at the right, right, there, at the right at the corner there yeah that that roof has been those those uh, shingles failed on us and it was a, a company that um, you know we're not we weren't able to um, yeah. get resolution from so we're actually um, we've gone out to bid and got a roofer um, they're working on this now uh, I believe they started at Story Ave, um, but they'll be over here. And, and again, this was um, supported as well by some CPA funding to help us now, out. So. Now, the police presence there, they're, they're going to move all into the new police yeah, station. Yeah, I believe so. They'll, they'll I be, believe yeah, so. Yeah, that, this is actually right across the street from us, right? right? We right. could probably see it through the window. Yeah, probably, we, probably. <laughs> now, but that would be nice. That's been where, a long time coming. Where are you getting the money to do these mm -hmm. capital projects? So the, um, the Garden City Towers, the federal public housing, every year we are awarded a capital fund um, a lot. And it's roughly uh, three hundred, three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So the, this elevator job is actually taking us three years worth of funding to to oh, complete. So okay. Yeah. So we we but we get that money every year, and we we have to do a five-year plan of how we anticipate spending this money. So the um, so we always have a rolling base of of what's next. Okay. But, but right now, because this elevator job is so big, it's taking up three years of our funding. Right. And then the state money. Um, the there's a modernization um, department that awards us um, they call it formula funding so what they do is they look at um, the number of units you have and base it on the uh, the work that you need done and they share a, a you know the bond money with the entire state all the housing authorities yeah. so now, now your budget in general mm -hmm. so you're you're funded by uh, the the state department or you uh, or you're funded by HUD mm -hmm. and and so the HUD money that the federal government approves for HUD they have HUD d facilities like yours right. all over the country correct and then they they allocate and you you, right. you have to submit what do you submit like a needs assessment every um, year or we, how do they we submit um, a, a, a PFS performance uh, we submit a form <laughs> <laughs> that we put all of our utility information on, and our um, we're we're they're giving us a PUM, a per unit month cost that we um, have to live within, and then based on what we project for income, they come up with a number. And this is for the federal side of uh, subsidy that they're going to award us. So the subsidy that we receive for normal operating is different than the capital fund right, right, money yeah, that we get. Yeah. And similar on the state side, we do a separate state budget. And based on our, you know, our actual income, the state sets our bottom line based on our number of units. And then our utilities are whatever they are. And then our income is whatever yeah. it is. And then the net difference, if we're at a deficit, uh, um, the state will fund that okay. in subsidy. But we've been, a, we've been subsidy free for many years and um, primarily operating off of our rental income, which I don't think a lot of people realize. Um, they think that we, we, 
get tons of money from the state, yeah. um, which we do in terms of modernization, but we weren't always a subsidy earning um, agency. We, we are now as costs have risen, um, as utilities have risen, you know, we're subsidy okay. earning now. So, so we're, we're, we're almost out of time, Debbie. So t tell us sure. your website once again. Sure. It's www.beverlyhousing.net. Beverlyhousing.net. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, well, I'd at least like to uh, tell our viewers, Debbie, thank you very much for, for coming on uh, BevCam and uh, North Shore Journal. I'd like to tell our viewers uh, that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.